has gone to the webcam. Yeah. Perfect. Let's look up. Oops. Good evening, everybody. Atma Namaste. Let me just mute and we'll start with a short prayer. All right, so moving on to chapter five today, right? <laughs> the, the basic chakra. <laughs> Let's close our eyes, connect onto our palate, inhale and exhale to the Supreme Being, the Divine Father, Divine Mother, to our beloved and respected teacher, Grandmaster Chokok, Sri to Lord Maha Guruji Neeling, to Buddha Kwanian, Buddha Sakyamuni, Gautama Buddha, to Lord Christ, to Lord Yehoswa Bamiriam, to Lord Shiva, Lord Ganesha, to all the great beings of knowledge, light, and power especially the great teachers and masters of theosophy. To our soul and divine self, we humbly ask for your great, great blessings as we gather together to have a greater, deeper, clearer understanding of these priceless teachings. We ask you to bless us all with greater light and knowledge and wisdom and understanding, with greater clarity. We ask you to help us to absorb and assimilate all this knowledge and use it to become better divine instruments in your care. With thanks and in full faith, so be it. Inhale the energy, exhale, spread it to your entire being. Inhale and exhale, relax, slowly open your eyes with a smile. Atma Namaste everybody, welcome today. Did any of you get uh, to read a little bit on the chapter? Very long, right? It's very long. All right, uh, Amit, you can go ahead. Really? No, why you not? Can go. You can start. Oh, I'm still on this. Sorry, I just finished the meditation. So this is still on my He doesn't want me to talk. <laughs> no, it's not that. All right. Go ahead. Go, go, go. Okay, so chapter five is basically the base of the spine chakra. We can start with. Yeah, so uh, the base of the spine, with reference to what you and I know, in Sanskrit it is referred to as the Muladhara Chakra, it's the root chakra, a very important chakra that's, uh, it's like the, the roots of a tree, and if the nutrients are not absorbed by the root, then the tree will get affected. So anything to do with your physical form, right, one of the key and important uh, chakras is this uh, chakra which they call um, the base of the spine center. Right, and in pranic healing, we call it the basic chakra very simply. And uh, to to make it a little bit more interesting, which we already know, it says that uh, it is the first center that they refer to. And uh, this chakra is at the base of the spine, has a primary force which radiates four spokes. Yes. Uh, so remember, we were talking about the the way that energy comes out. And because of that division, it looks like it has uh, four sections or uh, in some cases also called four petals. So it says, uh, making the center appear to be divided into uh, quadrants, which is basically four, with a hollow between them like a cross, right? And that's where it looks like a spoke. And then uh, we, they talk about the colors. So if you look at the image, uh, the next uh, page, if you look at the image that we have there. Yes, I'm talking about, uh, let me see it. Yeah, so we're going to this image. If you have have it in front of you, please open uh, that particular. Uh, and that one is open. Okay, so yeah. So when this chakra is, is fully activated, it's, it's functioning at its, uh, at its best, I guess. They say that the center looks like a fiery orange red. And so a healthy basic chakra should have these two colors. Yes, a lovely orange red. And, uh, you know, so uh, the color is really vibrant. It's really healthy. It does not have any kind of muddy color around it. It's, it's literally uh, vibrant. And so it says this is the color which corresponds closely to the stream of the dark red. 
and the orange uh, glow. Uh, you remember we were talking about the vitality globules, those two colors that come here. So the dark red and the orange are the two that come from the spleen towards uh, the basic chakra. Yes. And uh, yes, I, I think that's basically what they're mentioning. However, what I found interesting was from the basic chakra, the colors that are there further then go to other parts as well. And, and it also gathers some of this energy. So if you look at that picture that we have from the spleen chakra, you can see the red and the orange coming. Now the other color that they say that also comes here is a dark purple. So that was what I was looking for. So it says here, in addition to the orange and dark red, there is also some dark purple vitality flowing into the center. Rather, as though the spectrum bend round in a circle and the colors behind again at a uh, lower octave. So, bring that again. Okay, if you don't have it, let me just show this to you, right? And so you have this particular chakra. And so the colors that are coming there, you can see that it has the orange and the dark red, and it also has dark purple coming in. The red and the orange comes from the spleen chakra, right? So it comes in, uh, the same thing that uh, Amit mentioned earlier, and then remember there's a secondary force that kind of rotates it. And then part of it goes uh, to other places. So we're gonna come to that in a bit. So if you look at the lower part, you can see it goes towards what we call the sex or organs and also with reference to the blood, right? So uh, that is something I thought I would just add at this point. You can add and then we go to the next part. Yeah. Um, so it says the first center or chakram is um, at the base of the spine. So it gives the location, which is corresponding to the location that we know. So I am okay with that. Uh, the primary force which relates it has basically four petals. Uh, the number of spokes shows you the subtleness of the energy of the chakra. So if there are four spokes, it's like um, the force is divided into four parts and it's rotating with four, four spokes. So the, the energy produced is more gross compared to something with six spokes and 10 and then 50, uh, 100, 1000. So it, it, you know, the more the spokes, the more refined the energy. Always remember that, yeah? Um, you need four spokes for, um, for the physical body, you need grosser energy for the physical body, all right? You know, it's like those uh, mixies that we have, when you have difference, you know, the number of blades actually makes it much finer, something like that. So uh, the energy also becomes more subtle when there are more of these uh, spokes present. Okay. So uh, it says when aroused into full activity, that word may has a different connotation today. Um, so we'll just uh, use the word uh, activated, that's the one Master Chua uses, okay? Uh, so um, we won't arouse anyone's uh, basic into full activity. Um, so another word we, we want to use is activated because you see, sometimes these words, they mislead you. The direction it goes away. So in other words, when the basic chakra is activated, right? As we know in uh, advanced pranic healing, when the basic chakra becomes activated, the energy is pulled up from the ground and transmitted to different parts. So the basic chakra uh, over here is a different type of, uh, in essence, uh, it's, it's similar, but they have not revealed a lot uh, that they should have, maybe in those days they didn't, that we know about the basic chakra. They have not revealed a lot. Uh, number one, they cannot reveal it in my point of view because they don't have, uh, they're not able to reveal the existence of the sex chakra and they're not able to reveal the existence of the Ming Min Chakra. Now, when you have the Ming Min missing, uh, the Ming Min and basic are almost hand in hand. The basic pulls up the energy, the Ming Min delivers the energy, right? So here they're looking at the, the energy coming from the spleen to the basic. Now, I'm not sure how that works, but basically what I understand is the energy does not go from the spleen to the basic. The energy goes from the basic to the spleen. Now, whether there's a mistake uh, in that or whether, uh, and I've showed you quotes about that from Master Chua's book, Grand Prana. And here they're not talking about Grand Prana. And, oops. So just please. Okay. 
Anyway, so they're not talking about here about ground prana. They talk, we, we have a new webcam and don't use the... I'm not maybe. moving it anymore. Okay, anyway. So, um, my mistake. All right, so where was I? So you have the basic chakra. The energy comes in from the spleen according to them. Now, first of all, when it's activated, it's fiery, what is it? Orange, or, right? Yeah. Fire orange. orange red. The basic has a lot of orange and a lot of red. When it's very dynamic, it's fiery orange red. It almost looks like a blazing fiery orange ball. Uh, there is very minimal yellow in the basic. If you have too much yellow, that's a very bad sign because then you have chaotic growth. It's almost uh, like cancer. Uh, so it's not good to have too much yellow. You need very, very minute amount of yellow in the basic uh, and the other chakras. And I think uh, in the case of heart, the red is much less. Yeah. which again is unhealthy. So these colors are very important in those chakras. So this is basically, I think, how Ayurveda also works. They look at the, you know, the heat in the body, the vata, pitta, the different, different types. So everyone calls it different things. Here we're looking at color prana to keep it simple. Um, so basically here it's showing the energy coming from the spleen to the basic as the primary source. But we know that the basic is one of the major inlets of energy for the body. Without ground prana, it's very difficult for the body to exist. It's very difficult for the body to grow from a newborn all the way to an adolescent. And, you know, so fast, the musculoskeletal system requires basic energy, ground prana, to grow. It requires ground prana for the production of blood. Okay. Um, that is why I think it's written that this energy goes into... Uh, okay, you've not gone there yet. We'll, we'll go into there. <laughs> but you'll understand why. Uh, but this energy, basically, you get you pull in pull in this energy from the from the basic from the ground, the soles and the basic chakra pull in the ground prana. It goes from the basic to the spleen, all right, and from the basic it gets pumped upwards through the ming main, which we will come to soon, because you'll notice that there's a gap. And then I'll show you the PowerPoint here. We just like to be seen first, and then I'll show <laughs> you the PowerPoint explaining all of this from Master Cho's book. All right. So uh, moving on to the second part. So we were just talking about the, uh, the location. We were talking about the colors. And now we we'll look at what actually happens to this energy uh, from the basic chakra. All right. So moving on, if you have your book. So it says from the center, this orange and red rays flow towards the uh, generative organs, which I would call reproductive organs and the urinary bladder, energizing the sexual nature. So it's not just only the uh, sexual nature, but I would also say the sexual organs which are required. Uh, it also seems to enter the blood and keeps up the heat of the body. So for me, the sustenance of a muscular skeletal system, uh, the production of blood, which we already know in Master Joe's books, uh, the adrenal uh, as well, and uh, the, ex the, the physical form, right? Uh, the maintenance of our physical form, the basic chakra is very important. And they also mention the heat of the body. And so that's why when we talk about fever, we are able to cleanse uh, this particular center. And then of course, Master Chua says otherwise for energizing. So this is a very important center that controls, yes, the heat of the body. It takes care of your blood, which is very vital to you, the muscular skeletal system. So remember, it is within the bone that the blood is produced. So if it takes care of the muscular skeletal system, obviously the blood comes under that. And even with reference to your skin, yes? So the growth of cells, the growth of your physical form, especially at the age that you're still growing, uh, I'm talking about vertically, not horizontally, <laughs> that depends on the basic chakra, yes? And so as you grow older, sometimes the spine actually starts to shrink. That's got to do also with the basic chakra. So when there's a problem with any part of your physical bone, skin, uh, with reference to your muscles, this chakra has to be looked into, right? So when you have problems with this, uh, the, these organs, then you need to definitely come down and check on this particular um, chakra. Now, coming to the movement of the energy. So a very remarkable uh, and important effect can be produced by a person who persistently uh, refuses to yield to the lower nature by long and determined effort, the orange red prana can then be uh, sent upwards to the brain where, it, uh, where, where, where all three constituents undergo a profound modification. And so it says here that the orange is raised uh, into a pure yellow that intensifies, yes, 
uh, intellectual, that is the Agnya Chakra. The dark red becomes crimson, moving towards uh, the heart area for me, that's affection and love. And the dark purple, yes, it gets transmuted into a more subtle color, the violet or uh, the pale violet that they call here, quickening the spiritual part of uh, the person's uh, spiritual nature, I would say. So for me, you have part of that color, the orange red going towards the uh, sex chakra, right? And it's very important also for our spiritual growth, we realize. And also part of it going towards the organs it controls. But then part of this energy from the basic chakra, also they say, if a person is able to take care of his lower nature, which means we have control over what we want physically, uh, with reference to our sexual needs, with reference to our food needs and our emotional state, then a lot of this energy, instead of being used here, will then be sent upwards. Now to go upwards, as Amit mentioned, you need that pump. Otherwise, this is like our sump here, which has all that lovely, amazing uh, orange red energy and maybe that purple that they're talking about. But there's no way for it to travel. For it to be pumped up, you need that Meng Meng Chakra. And so through that chakra, they are then able to send this upwards. And for me, uh, this, this also reminds me of what Master Cho talks about in, in uh, transmutation, right? So that energy, those colors are then sent up, which first affects the heart, bringing about greater love and affection and, and uh, compassion for all, then moves up, right? So Master Cho says on the emotional state, it helps us. Then it moves up, that orange becomes yellow according to them, affecting the Agni Chakra for me, which is intelligence. And they say it awakens the intellectual section, which is also the mental body. So it was the astral body here, it's a mental body here. And then ultimately that purple goes into the crown as violet and therefore uh, helping one to again, bring the lower energies all the way up, which is now beneficial for me uh, for many other things. So it's, it's helping you on the physical level where we spoke about the regenerative organs or the reproductive organs and the blood and the muscles. It helps us on the emotional level with the heart, the mental level at the Agni Chakra and on the spiritual level with reference to the crown where we're talking about violet. Okay. So here um, from the center, the orange red ray flows to the regenerative organs, energizing the sexual nature. So the sex chakra basically. and uh, seems to enter the blood. By the way, just to go back, when you see the spleen center going into the basic, uh, what I was referring to is in the earlier sessions when we spoke about the basic perineum, navel and spleen, we're talking about the connection there. And both the basic is in charge of the blood. So obviously there's a connection from the basic to the spleen because both uh, the spleen is in charge of purification of the blood as well for the physical body. So both there is energy moving back and forth to a certain extent. Uh, due to communication, but uh, I think it's mostly the other way. Um, now, regarding where it goes, this, the basic chakra, when it, uh, since it's, it says that it goes to revitalize or rejuvenate the sex organs, that basically means that the, the, the healthiness of the sex chakra is predominantly, uh, is, you know, is... Um, is dependent on the health of the basic, all right? That's why uh, you notice as a person grows older, there's, you know, uh, and the, the basic becomes weaker and weaker. There, there's, obviously, if you compare an 18-year-old and the sex drive of a 50-year-old and then a sex drive of an 80-year-old, there's a difference, okay? Um, so uh, you notice that it becomes less and less and less, all right? Now, this is predominantly because of the basic energies. The basic energy is really, really required. Actually, it's more the ground prana that's really, really required for healthy body, like Sumi said. But you said something about... Well, I should write it down when you stop. Um, so, because there was another aspect to what you were saying, uh, additional one. Um, but it's a requirement for a healthy, vital, young body. If you want to maintain your youthfulness, you want to maintain your, uh, your brain, uh, your capacity to think, you need a healthy basic, you need a healthy sex chakra. That's the foundation behind super brain yoga as well. Basic energy is being transmuted, okay? Um, now there are two aspects to this. Um, by the way, many of the people know this. They know about ground prana, they know about the basic chakra, they know about the sex chakra. That's why if you look at uh, boxers, uh, they're always, now if you scan someone's basic, if you know scanning, how to check the energy, you, you just do a squat, you'll notice that the basic becomes bigger immediately. All right, you can do this experiment, it's very easy. Just ask them to squat and you share, it becomes bigger. 
all right so that's why the boxers they keep bouncing that's why martial artists when they want to fight they they crouch lower and there's a, a there's a there's a ability to actually pull in ground prana to make a very powerful shield also okay uh, and also it's also used by uh, certain dhumo yogis to maintain body heat and also increase or decrease body heat based on the temperature of the environment so what they do is they they have three components we we won't talk about it this is an open session but what they do is they imagine drops coming in from the top of their head and going down all the way to the basic area. And they call these drops tigli. I think they call them tigli. And with that, they, uh, they, they increase their body heat. All right, so that they can just meditate in the snow uh, and um, their body doesn't get affected. But of course, you need uh, two, three other centers to move the energy around. Um, now, um, even in martial arts, you have this technique called horse stance, where they just squat and they just squat for, for a long time. And that stance is ridiculous because you're completely open. <laughs> you know, it's a completely open stance. But the, um, the purpose of that is to actually build the uh, ability of the basic to pull in more and more ground prana and to, to draw in more ground prana every second so that the bones are healthier, the blood is healthier, and the person is really re revitalized and powerful. Okay. So that is about the... Can I add one? Yeah. Uh, so when he was talking, one of the things, um, one of the things um, I remembered, if you look at the Bharatanatyam dancers, right, our traditional dance uh, in India, you normally uh, squat but sideways and you have to touch Mother Earth before you start with the dance, right? And you'll notice that a lot of their uh, movements is also restricted towards the feet being flat and they can, they're not usually uh, with slippers, right? They wear they're basically barefoot and they do the dance and you'll notice that their lower body is very, very strong. So if you do go for a recital, uh, if you can scan the energy of the person when she comes on stage or he comes on stage and when, when they continue to dance, you'll notice that the low body, or if you've seen anything in the past, just scan their body before, just their aura, especially the low aura and afterwards, you'll notice that it becomes really heavy and thick. Yes? Actually, in Bharatanatyam, it's amazing. There's a lot because, more, but uh, yeah, just with this basic, I'm talking. actually a lot. <laughs> they start from down, but uh, also, if you've seen the movie Gladiator. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. You know, the guy uh, would take, uh, you see the basic chakra, the psychological aspect is the instinct for survival. I don't know why it's talking about Kundalini as the astral aspect, but it's the instinct of survival. Um, so what the person would do in Gladiator, he's, if you notice, he'd always take the earth and smell the earth. Uh, if, you, if you've seen the movie Gladiator, if you haven't just watched it, it's a little bit depressing, but it's nice. Uh, not seen in a long time. So they smell the earth before he fights. Now, when you do that, we experimented with Master. Uh, and when we did that, when you just, you know, smell the earth a little bit and you're holding the earth in your hands, the basic became really big and solid. Okay, now just don't go to any random earth. You might have uh, other things inside there, you know, outside your house. Make sure it's good quality soil. <laughs> All right, so, uh, so what they would do is, uh, according to Master Joy, he says, you know, he will, he will breathe and increase his basic to increase his chances of survival so he can fight. Okay, so basic has a lot of secrets. Now, about the movement of energy, a very remarkable and important effect can be produced by a person who persistently refuses to yield to the lower nature. It's very complicated. Basically, it means that um, when the divine energy is in control of the lower chakras from a pranic healing point of view. So when the higher chakras are in control of the lower chakras, okay, um, and uh, what he uh, also means is refuses to yield to the lower nature. It, it makes it sound very, uh, you see, this is why it was so difficult in the old days because this is how uh, in new, new age, or no, I don't want to use new age word, but um, the way we are taught in pranic healing, this is where we're very lucky. Because when you read this uh, 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 word, persistently refuse to yield to lower nature, it's like you're almost fighting. But the word is not supposed to be fighting. The word is supposed to be regulating, okay? Not to suppress. So what they mean is, if you still have a purit puritanical nature, it's not gonna move up this energy. What they're talking about is energy going from the lower energies to the upper. Now, energy is always moving from lower chakras to the upper chakra, but how do you get more to go up? Um, that is number one, 
you because since they they have not revealed the existence of the sex chakra they're only talking about from the basic so i'm adding all the sex chakra stuff in this as well so the sex chakra and the basic together if you don't have a puritanical attitude if you are not excessive in your thinking then what happens is and you have a very normal attitude towards uh, the sex and other other aspects and the high chakra is in control then the energy can flow from lower to higher all right now the question is they have written that that it goes up and it becomes pure yellow and it's so nice and so good it goes into the affection and it shows you what does it show you it goes into the intensifies intellect quickens spirituality stimulates affection uh, the question is how does it do that <laughs> that is not explained in the book right okay this goes from here whoop, it goes up and that happens but how does it do that now you need three alchemical centers to do this the first alchemical center, alchemical, alchemical center is the etheric alchemical center, which is the Ming Min chakra, vital, okay? That will step up the uh, energy completely. So from a gross ground prana, it becomes much higher quality prana. Then you need an emotional alchemical center, that is the heart chakra. And then you need a spiritual alchemical center, that is the crown chakra. So that's what happens. The heart, it stimulates affection, intensifies intellect, Quick in spirituality. <laughs> All right. So, um, so, so very simple. Okay. So you can continue your book. All right. So then, um, the last, almost the last paragraph, we talk about uh, it is the seat of the Kundalini. Uh, remember, it doesn't say the Kundalini actually resides there, it just says it's a seat. So there is what you call the Kundalini, the snake, the, uh, the, uh, the serpent fire. There are different ways in which uh, they have represented this, including the snake that lies somewhere at the base of the spine. Yes. And then it says, um, this will, we'll come to it a little later, but for the present, they say all they want to tell us is that uh, to make a note that if a man is able to achieve uh, transmutation just mentioned uh, and will find that the sensual desires no longer trouble him. It doesn't mean that, uh, you know, the person is important or something of that sort. It basically means that uh, what, what Amit mentioned, the higher uh, chakras and, and the higher energies are now in control of the lower uh, chakras or the lower energies. And so what happens is what is required for the basic chakra or the sex chakra or the navel chakra or the solar plexus chakra is now balanced to an extent. It's not excessive, uh, nor is it too conservative. Because Master Cho also mentions that you and I, live in a city and we want to spiritually evolve it's not possible to go to you know an ashram and stay for uh, three four years and then you know uh, get techniques and practice neither can we uh, leave our family and go for too long and so he says the the method of uh, using all this knowledge and practicing it because just knowledge is one thing but to practice it uh, he says i've given you something that's very practical that you can actually uh, do on a regular basis, living with the family, doing your work, yes, uh, because we have to also provide and at the same time spiritually evolve. So it is tougher, but this energy can be awakened and moved on. Uh, however, we need to be able to have a house to stay, a comfortable home. Uh, we need to have, Master Chua says, uh, also transport. He says you don't have to walk. I mean, in the old days, people, when they are spiritual, they, they wear very, uh, very, very simple clothes and very minimal. They don't have too much. And they would walk everywhere, sometimes barefoot, sometimes just on those wooden sandals. But today he says it's okay for you to have uh, a means of transport, to go from point A to point B. He says that all it has to be is uh, practical. It doesn't have to be expensive. So you need clothes. Uh, you need to have proper clothes to take care of your body. And so when we have control of, say, that is the basic chakra, and then uh, the energy in the sex chakra, to be able to use it effectively because this energy also is important for the kundalini to move up. You don't have enough fuel, the vehicle is not going to move, right? And so this energy has to go up. And for that, you need enough sex energy. And so you, you cannot be in, in, a, in a spiritual school where they allow you to have as many partners as you want. And so when you have many partners, then all that sex energy, all that fuel is used up. Then where are you going to go? Your vehicle is just stuck. At the same time, you can't have a puritanical attitude where you feel that, uh, as Amit mentioned earlier, you can't have that sex is bad and sex is dirty because then the energy gets stuck in the sex chakra. And so even though you have this amazing amount of energy, <laughs> nothing can go up because you've, you've just blocked all the roads going up. 
And so it, that is very, very important. And then the ability to have control over the food we take. Yes, there is a, there is a strong desire sometimes to eat a certain amount. Sometimes the egregor of starvation in many of our countries is so strong that we feel we need to eat more. Otherwise, you know, we were not, we're not going to get the next meal. Uh, sometimes it's got to do with something that we've experienced earlier. And so to be able to also recognize, hey, this is all I need for this body. I don't need to eat more than this. And then I think the, the, the one that we all struggle with is the solar plexus. Because the solar plexus has, yes, emotions that are both positive and negative. But sometimes the positive takes so much of our energy. Uh, emotionally, we are upset, we are annoyed, we become sad and depressed sometimes for a very long time. And then the, the positive emotions in the solar plexus, like your strength and assertiveness and determination, kind of goes to the background and you almost forget that you have that. But then if you can go back to that, that energy that you and I require on a regular basis to be able to say, you know what, I'm going to push, I'm going to get through this, I'm going to overcome this limitation, that is also in the solar plexus. But for that to manifest, you need to have the higher energy sticking control. So you need the heart, for example, the love. Uh, when it becomes bigger, then obviously if you have so much love, anger cannot last for too long. Yes, so the energies in the heart will transmute the lower emotions, have control over the lower emotions. So then when I say control, it means that then it will allow the strength and determination that you have within you to then manifest in your life rather than anger and irritation and, and whatever, jealousy or whatever you have. And so that's what we are saying. So as you start to change the ability of the body, right, to take care of the lower needs, which is important, but just as much as we need, not excessive. So as that happens, then the energies will then allow the pathway, which is the central portion uh, within us, uh, which they call also sometimes the, uh, the spine uh, physically and the sushumna uh, in the uh, etheric body, to open up without any blocks. Because when we have all these hindrances, these weaknesses, these uh, habits, right, they become like blocks and the energy, this kundalini energy that we're talking about, which is essential to our spiritual growth, cannot move as quickly upwards. As we have greater balance in our lower chakras, the upper chakras obviously then will also start to grow because when you have a better balance, then the energy flowing into you changes. All right? And so they say then the serpent fire is, uh, is aroused and will freely move. Yes, and, and with nothing in its path to stop, there is what, what they say no longer troubles him and then allows everything else to pass all the way up. When a man has finally completed the change, the orange-red rays passes straight into the center at the base of the spine and runs through upwards, through the hollow in the vertebral column. Yes, so that's the spine, or I would call it the sushumna, all the way to the brain. So this channel, this road has to have no blocks. It has to allow the Kundalini to go all the way up to the brain. Now, sometimes it might get stuck, but as we purify, it will open up. It's like our Indian roads, especially in Bangalore. If you're trying to go from here to another path, they've dug up so many parts of the road. So you have to go like this left, right, find a new way. And then, but once the roads are all done, you can just go straight up. And, and that's what we want to do as we evolve. And they say that this is also represented sometimes by what is called the flaming cross. And so it says in the last line here, a flaming cross is a symbol sometimes used to represent the serpent fire residing at the base of the spine. Yep. And so with that, I will give it to Amit and with, we should end uh, with this chapter definitely. Okay. Um, now, first of all, there's a correction. It says the seat of Kundalini, the serpent fire, is in the base of the spine center. It is not. Uh, it is not there. <laughs> okay, it's not in there. Um, it is near the base of the spine. It's not a point. You know, people think of Kundalini as a point. It's not a point. It's an area. All right. It's a general area. And the whole idea is just talking about again before that overcoming your lower nature and keeping some fuel, in, like uh, like Sumi said. And um, you see. Think of, the, we'll go to this, there's a chapter on Kundalini, so I don't want to talk too much, but you need the sex energy. Think of it, uh, and this is an example that's usually given. Think of the um, Kundalini energy as a passenger that has to go somewhere, but the sex energy is the chariot with the horse, <laughs> okay? And your puritanical attitude is the horse tied with the rope, 
to the to a to a hook. So you are trying to go, but your puritanical attitude is holding you back. So the moment you let it go, the energy goes. Either it goes out of your body, <laughs> all right, or it goes up the. You know, there are different ways it can go out, right? So, or it goes uh, up, you know, to the okay. upper chakras. Where it's supposed to be. And then to go, using right? the three transmuter centers, it it transforms. So, uh, and lastly. Um, now, this is something you need to think about because this is a study session. Um, where are we? Last paragraph. Okay, now, it shows, uh, you see, a couple of things. Number one, the ground prana has not been spoken about. All right? This is vital. I don't think there's much energy coming from the spleen to the basic because as an engineer, at least I was, <laughs> uh, educationally <laughs> speaking, uh, but as a businessman also, it does not make logistical sense, right? <laughs> because the spleen already, we have learned, absorbs the prana and gives it to the upper chakras. Already to the throat, from there it's given to the upper chakras, right? Yeah. So why does it need to go from the spleen, take a nice long road to the base of the spine? That's what it says, right? When the yeah. man has come to the orange red ray, passes straight into the center, the base of the spine, and then runs upwards. Why does it need to go from the spleen Ah, okay, so from the spleen, I go up. Now from the spleen, I go all the way back down, and then I'm going all the way back up again. <laughs> For what? So when you think clearly, you know that there's some missing uh, keys. There's something missing there. It doesn't make sense. Why would the body send energy up to the brain and then send energy down to go up again? For what? Right? For what? Something is missing. All right, so what is missing? Ming Ming Chakra, Sex Chakra missing, Ground Prana missing. Okay, so you have to, this is where you practice a lot of discernment, all right? You need air prana, you need ground prana. And everything comes, both air prana and ground prana comes from solar prana anyway. That's what we learned from the first few chapters. Uh, Master Chow would tell us like that, ah, oh, uh, everything comes from solar prana. I never understood it then. When I found it so complicated, I'm like, ah, that's what he was talking about. Anyway, uh, so flaming cross, I have no idea what it is. <laughs> all right. I think in certain religions, that's blas blasphemy, right? Burn the cross. Uh, okay. <laughs> anyway. So. All right. So uh, w one thing to remember, yes, someone has mentioned, yes, the psychological aspect of uh, the basic chakra is not mentioned. And I think yeah. I've, I've not actually found it in any other book other than Master Chur's Pranic Psychotherapy. It book. does say it's to do with Kundalini. Uh, Correct. No, but uh, with reference to uh, survival of uh, uh, the instinct of survival, it's not, not really, I'm not found it. So I think that is something to remember that Master Chua has mentioned with reference to the basic chakra. So for you to be able to get a job, to be able to sustain a job, especially with this time with COVID, a lot of people are losing their job. Uh, enhancing and strengthening the basic chakra is truly important. Okay. To come there, people didn't have jobs that much before. Okay. Right. Uh, so, I mean, they did, but not like how we, yeah. you know, it's not like the way we do it today. Normally in those days, I think you join a job and then you live your life through that job and that's that. You stay in the same place but all through. you have to think about what you need to be good at your job. To keep your job, what do you need? You need, uh, you need the will to do action and you need, so you need a good body, you need a healthy body, you need a, uh, and you need a dynamic thinking or you need to be able to think clearly. Now, to be able to think clearly, one of the main factors is also ground prana. Okay. And that's why when you squat down, when you learn this technique called super brain yoga, the purpose of squatting down is to pull the ground prana up. Okay. So uh, in the book, master has written, maybe you have not observed that ground prana is required. And even Arthur Powell has written, or he has quoted that you need the basic energy to uh, develop your intellect. So you need ground prana. All right. So to keep a job. So they're just looking at that point. But if you look at it, why does it help you with survival? Because it helps you keep sharpness of mind and it helps you help keep your body healthy. If your body's not healthy, you can't go to work. Uh, and also it maintains practicality. And to maintain practicality, you need the earth cord, which is also connected to the basic, sort of. <laughs> anyway. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Enough. Enough. All right, now. Uh, Sorry, just uh, one second. Yeah, Where's my PowerPoint? We didn't open it. I have to oh, summarize sorry, the second. chapter once again. Wait. One second. This is moving a lot. Hold on. I don't think we opened it. Really. 
Is this, can you hold sure. that? Sure. Sorry, just hold on. You didn't take it. You didn't take it yet. Study session. I don't know. Click on it. Yesterday, right? I didn't send it yesterday. I sent it on Monday. Okay, I know where it is. So let's go get it. It's my desktop. Chapter 5, bro. Um, I, so just to summarize, all right, so chapter five, you have the four petals. It contains red and orange prana. All right. So we know that just to summarize and cross reference. And it also affects and energizes the sexual organs, right? The basic chakra affects body heat and general vitality and growth of infants. So it's almost the same as what was said in the book. And this is how it does. The question is, how does it do it? And that is revealed in the uh, spiritual essence of man. Uh, you, you use the Ming Main to do the etheric transmutation. You use the back heart to do the emotional and then you use the crown. Okay. So especially when you want to forgive in the Lord's prayer, they use the same approach. If you notice the, the, so the Ming Min also emotionally, astrally also converts some of that energy, but it does most of the hard work appoint master. Anyway, we won't go into that. Okay. So uh, here it says in advance, part of the basic energy goes to the brain. Therefore matching of the basic also seriously affects the brain. Um, now, from the basic chakra to the crown, subtle energy stepped up, modified, transformed, and spiritualized. All right. Now, here it talks about how ground prana helps. One can learn to consciously draw in more ground prana. If you've done basic prana healing, you know how to do that. To increase one's vitality, capacity to do more work, and the ability to think more clearly. These are the three things you need to be good at a job also. <laughs> Okay, so usually if one is missing, you're not very good at work. Okay, sometimes people are good at work, they do too much work, but they're not thinking clearly. <laughs> All right, so now a healthy basic chakra is a critical factor in one's youthfulness and health. So all these techniques of uh, yoga, of uh, developing a strong body, of martial arts, of immortality, all of this requires a very powerful, strong basic chakra. It is the foundation, one of the foundations. The other one is the sex, uh, but it's the kingdom. It's your physical kingdom, all right? That's why it's known as the kingdom. You have two kingdoms. One is in the heart, that's your um, physical permanency. Then this is the basic, which is your actual physical kingdom, which you need for your physical kingdom to exist, okay? For various factors. And in Supra Yoga, it says, when energy from the basic chakra and sex energy moves to the heart energy, they're transformed to peace, love, and compassion. And when they go up to the crown, they transform the energy of spirituality. This is almost the same thing I said in this book. Uh, since the crown uh, energy center controls and energizes the brain, the energy is also transformed a subtle type of energy that's utilized for energizing the brain uh, for its proper functioning or to develop intelligence. So all three aspects are, are developed. And, uh, it, the base, and the Kundalini is located near the base of the spine. It's not located at the base of the spine. So that is that. So I think uh, I think that should cover this chapter. In villages, wrestler applies mud to their body before wrestling. That's that. I I saw that. I noticed that in that Salman Khan movie, Sultan. No way. No. So those two daughters of his. That's why he. That's Ahmed Khan. No, that's not Salman. Oh, Salman Khan. No, Sultan, man. Oh, I don't know who Sultan is. And okay, go ahead. <laughs> um, what else? Um. Cycler, okay, spine has all the colors. No, no, the spine is just a channel. Spine is just a channel, all right? Uh, stress energy always gets into the spine and makes us more tired. And we also have back pain, why? 
It's not the stress energy, it's from the solar plexus, but this is the pranic killing question because the solar plexus is, uh, you see, the solar plexus is connected to most of the chakras. So when it's not doing too well, I'll do it. You can answer the questions. No, no, it's okay, go ahead. No, I'm just trying ahead. to see why I can't fix it today. Yeah, you can. Okay, so the solar plexus, uh, when it gets overactivated, uh, and it depends where it is. Now, most people with lower back pain you're talking about, those are people who don't express things properly. Um, the people who express things properly, they'll have mostly uh, heart pain and sinusitis and those kind of things because the energy goes up. Uh, people who, because it's in the front solar. From the front solar, you have a big meridian to the heart. Why are we talking about this? This is a pranic killing question. From, should I answer? I don't know your answer. Okay, anyway. You see, you have the front solar, you have the back solar. If you're uh, the expressive type, you, you said this to me, you know what I'll do to you? Uh, the front solar is affected. That goes up to the heart, to the throat. If you're always smiling, you know, like a Swami or a Mataji, uh, you keep it in, it goes to the back. And from the back, it obstructs the flow of energy from the basic main main and up. So more energy goes down, contaminating the main main and your basic. And then it goes around what we call the belt meridian and affects your ability to bend. And then, uh, then it finally goes into your legs. So basically the channels are already there. So it basically dirties the energy channels. Okay. So we had okay, some we'll more. Anyway, we will not answer that question fully. That's the front one. Uh, it may be that air prana comes from the spleen and ground prana. Yes, it is. Not maybe. I've shown that quote a couple of times. That's why I didn't put it this time. Uh, air prana comes from the spleen. Um, and a substantial and ground prana comes from the soles of the feet and the basic that's there in the and and air prana also comes in from the uh, from the nose <laughs> when you breathe so from the back heart and the, the you know when you breathe in oxygen it's also filled with prana that's why your nose is pointed this way so it goes in the anyway yeah um, if number four determine the suddenness of energy then when a person is highly developed a person does the spokes increase in the basic. The spokes doesn't increase, but the color of the chakra changes. Uh, you have to understand that to, if you have a golden body and everything is gold, what do you think happens to the chakras? <laughs> right? So the basic starts to change. Even the subtleness of the red starts to change. So if you're looking at a more developed person, he projects likewise, right? If you've done advanced money healing, that energy, that red will be completely different from a person who is just uh, starting off. Yeah, the question about the Kundalini maybe later. Uh, comes from the sun, here from the base, what is different? Uh, no, that is the macro level and you're looking at the micro level. Uh, we will talk about it in the Kundalini chapter. And um, what does, why does the basic become less elastic as we grow old? Is it not possible to keep it elastic through our life? Definitely it's possible. You have to just sweep the basic perineum sex and uh, uh, navel, uh, once a week or twice a week, clean and energize with white only, and it will remain very strong. You do uh, semi squats. You, if you know the five Tibetan rites, you can learn that. If you've done Arhatic yoga, um, you, there are various exercises. Uh, uh, many concepts of Hatha yoga makes the uh, makes this uh, basic chakra very very flexible and very very uh, you know um, expressive. People who jog a lot, people who are you know exercising a lot, they they make their uh, basic chakra. Very, very strong. So many ways to do it. So many ways to do it. If you're a pranic healer, I think it's there in the advanced pranic healing book. Yeah. Yeah. For aging. It's become, it not only becomes less bi elastic, it almost calcifies as you grow old. Uh, you know, it's not vibrant anymore. So can we link logic of supreme yoga to basic? Yeah, of course. Why do you think you're squatting down for fun? <laughs> Actually, when you do it like this, if you scan someone's brain, all right, you scan this, you scan, it becomes big. You do this, you scan, it becomes big. Then you let go, all right? For those of you who don't yeah, everything comes back. So you have to, you can't walk around like this the whole day, right? You need it to be more permanent. So the way to make it permanent is by going up and down. And that is a whole explanation in itself. That's why some people, they pierce the ears to make it permanent. But uh, then they put the crystal to activate it. But you know, there's a danger of putting crystal too long on your ear because it uh, overactivates the jaw minor, which uh, has, okay, which affects the energy to the brain or the yeah. blood to the brain. What um, dark red and orange is transferred between the spleen and basic? Master say we have to use light brush, what is it? 
uh, yeah, we have to use light whitish color when we project, but you have to understand there are two, three colors mixing in the body. So the clairvoyant just sees what he writes. All right, so when, uh, what might be dark red, I was researching this. I was saying, what happens when you mix uh, red and orange? Does it become dark red? It supposedly becomes reddish orange. So, you know, uh, when ch chakras are moving, you have to understand, ground prana is going up. Uh, energy is coming from one, from the top, bottom. Energy is from the bottom coming up. It's not only one energy in the, in the you know, in the chakra. And when two, three colors mix, you have secondary colors and tertiary colors. He's just talking realistically what is there. But we are talking on the aspect of healing. <clears throat> yeah. Is that all? Is this a new... There is also science where ground prana has neutrons or electrons. Our body has the other part. We need ground prana to neutralize. Can you... What? I have no idea about that. That sounds like something I said in physics about earthing and all that stuff. Um... I have no idea, but... Neutrons, that. electrons, and body has the other part. We need to neutralize our body. I don't understand. The word neutralize your body means what? It could mean kill your body, or it could mean uh, neutralize what? What are you going to neutralize in your body? Your whole body will be neutralized? You see, you have to be... You have to practice a lot of discernment when you read something, because when you say the word neutralize your body, for me, it means neutralize what in the body? Like... Uh, Other part, like so the ground prana has neutrons or electrons. Yes, it does. Uh, that's why they call it the atom. <laughs> so I'm sure it has electrons. I mean, if you want to, uh, I, I, I didn't understand. Our body has the other part. What other part? I didn't understand what other part does it have. The other electron? I don't know about that. <laughs> the riding so, horse stance. The riding horse stance is similar when you practice in Taekwondo. Yes. Uh, what is actually Kundalini syndrome? Does it cause a disc bulge or other effects? Ah, Kundalini syndrome. Maybe we'll talk about it when we discuss um, the, chapter on, the chapter on Kundalini. By the way, uh, before Master Chua talked about it, the word Kundalini syndrome did not exist. Only people experienced it, but they had no idea what it was and why it was happening to them. So that's why if you read books of saints, you're like, ah, physical, uh, this guy has ESP Kundalini syndrome. But he had no idea and he did not know what is happening and how to fix it. It took a long, long time. Here, if you're done Arhatic, you know it instantly. When paragraph says lower active, meaning it turns with reference of dark, does that mean that the perineum is darker? No, octave, it's like musical instruments, you know, the notes. Low octave is just the last ray coming in. Uh, that's what it says. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's uh, closer to what we call grosser energy and subtle energy. So that could be another comparison. Okay, so I'm going to just, where is... Uh, no, we are done. <laughs> and don't start the navel. Finish. I'm every day losing five, five, ten We should have done it then. You said we're not going to the next chapter. You guys heard it, right? She said we're not going to the next chapter. I did. Yes, you did. I said we hope to finish, finish the next today's chapter. No, this you, chapter. You said we're not going to the next chapter. We're going to stop here. Actually, I have done the next chapter. Well. Yeah, so I'm saying, let me just finish no, this. No, don't. It's only two minutes left. Then you'll have questions on it. And then you'll talk about it again next time. Let's end with a beautiful education. Well, you do this. No, then. you do it. Come on. You wanted to talk. <laughs> All right, everybody. We'll end uh, <laughs> the session. So kindly close. <laughs> okay. But the key takeaway is, you need the basic chakra. Without the basic chakra, your body cannot be healthy. You can heal everything else. The basic has to be very powerful, very strong. Okay. All right. So with that, let's go to the end. And the uh, navel. We'll talk about that next chapter. <laughs> and the sex. <laughs> Close your eyes. Connect down to your palate, please. Inhale and exhale. To the Supreme Being, the Divine Father, Divine Mother, to our beloved and respected teacher, Grandmaster Chok, Oxley to Lord Mahagaruji Mary. To all the great ones, to all the holy masters, holy gurus, archangels, holy angels, and spiritual helpers, to our soul and divine self, we thank you for your great, great blessings, for your tremendous patience and understanding of us. Thank you for helping us with your wisdom and knowledge and understanding. Help us to continue to have a deeper and clearer grasp of these priceless teachings. We ask you, again, to help us assimilate this knowledge and use it to become better instruments to do your work. With thanks and in full faith, so be it. Atma Namaste, everybody. Atma Namaste. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thank you. We'll see you on Friday. Uh, we will end early on Friday. I will not stop you because you have to go to the next the, session. The next chapter is really short, but we'll have something to talk about because we've missed a couple of things again.
So we'll talk about that. Yeah, it's interesting. It's called navel chakra. Uh, but if you just read the first sentence, it says uh, it radiates 10 in 10 directions. Okay, enough. Yeah, so think about that. Uh, look at the answer in Master Cho's book and we'll come back to it uh, on Friday. Of course, it yeah? has to eat. <laughs> What? But 10 is not for me. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Bye. Take care, everybody. Afternoon. Bon appetit.